the next question was due to go to the brother, so we'll have the next question from the front mic. Good evening, Dr. Nayak. Uh, this is Sanjay Thakkar here. First of all, with all due respect to all my Muslim brothers and sisters here, before I ask my questions, I'd like to ask your kind, make a statement first. You see, religion goes beyond you know, supremacy or declaring supremacy over other religion. Uh, you know, it, it's more about looking, because, you know, God is omnipresent. You know, there is God in you, there is God in Him, there is God in Him, there is God in everybody. If we look for, if we have that, that vision, tunnel vision. Having said that, religion is more about tolerance, peace, love and humility and humanity. Having said that, uh, I beg to defer about your last statements proclaiming that, uh, you know, the other scriptures have failed the test. Now again, this could be a debate that could go on for hours and we have limitations on time. So I will, I'll just rest with two questions. My first question to you, doctor, is, uh, you know, Islam and, and the Quran condemns idol worship. Yet, in the Kaaba, people... Now, you had mentioned that one of the 20 misconceptions, first 13 that you had covered, I wasn't here at that time, so no I problem. missed it. So that's my first question. My second One question, question at a time, please. No problem. Uh, actually, no question. It's, it's, Go ahead. it's correlated, okay. sort no of. No problem. Yes. Yeah. yes, brother. My second question for you is, you know... I'm large-hearted. <laughs> Tolerant. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Very kind of you. Uh, my second question to you is, you know, the concept of um, Azan. You know, from what I understand, the concept of Azan came many, many decades or centuries back when there was no clock. There were no, uh, you know, way to actually decide what time of the day it is. And, and the only way people would realize that it's this time of the day for this prayer was based on Azan. Now, obviously, that's not the case now. You know, <laughs> we have clocks and we have... So then why is there Azan five times a day even in this day and age? These are my two questions. Brother asked two questions. Before he asked his two questions, he made some comments. I made a statement, not comments. It was, it was, it was a, you know, conclusive statement. Do that you think the statement and comments are contradicting? Uh, well, it was a it conclusive was a statement which could be challenging your, yes, your, yes. your Therefore statement. Therefore, I said, you made a comment or you made a statement or you made a challenge, no problem. Yeah, take it whatever you, <laughs> you would like. You <laughs> want to take a challenge, no problem. You said that Zakir while talking about other thing, you should be more tolerant, etc. And he said that I mentioned earlier that all the scriptures besides the Quran have failed the test. Failed the test of science. Complete my sentence, not the halfway. When you put the test of science, not the test of emotion. So you, you quoted me half. I said, if you test, put all the other scriptures the test of scientific facts. All the scriptures have failed except the Quran. You told me we can have a debate fast together. I am not here. I can rattle off verses from the Vedas. And from the Hindu scripture which aren't scientific, I don't want to do it. If you want to see, you can see my debate with Dr. William Campbell talking about Bible and Quran. Why I did that? He wrote a book saying there are 30 scientific errors in the Quran. And for eight years, no Muslim replied. I went to Chicago, I had a dialogue. I answered all his questions. And I posted 38 scientific errors in the Bible. He could not reply to one. I have had debates with many of your scholars, not you, Shishi Ravi Shankar, many, said to be number one in the world. Now, when I've spoken with them and they could not reply, now you are telling I'm wrong. No, I'm not, I didn't say you're wrong. You said you can have a debate for five hours. I'm not interested. When I had the debate with the best and they could not last for half an hour, do you think I'm a fool to have a debate with you for five hours? Well, Limitation of time. You are yes. prejudging my yes. intelligence. I am not prejudging. Many people, they tell me, Dr. Zakir Naik, we want to debate with you. You are not the only one. Many people. You know what I tell them? If you want to debate with me, you should have a following. If you can get 10,000 people minimum. Yeah, there are about 20,000. Someone told me. Now, if you can get 10,000 people for your talk, you are worth debating. I am not judging intelligence. So if you are a person who has a following, I don't want to make you famous. If I have a debate with you, you'll be seen by 100 million people. You know that? Now, let me complete my answer. What I tell any non-Muslim, many hundreds of non-Muslims want to debate with me. I tell them, there are hundreds of Hindus who I know, hundreds of Christians who I know, 
when they speak, they have more than 10,000 people for the audience. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, Ramdeo Baba, Christians, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Morris Firello, Benny Hinn, all these people, they have 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 for the gathering. You convince them and give your material to them. Let them debate me. They will never take your material knowing very well. It will not stand the test. These are scholars of your religion. What I tell you, if you really feel you have strong material and you really think you have intelligence, give this material to your Hindu who you consider to be best. Okay. And who has a following. If you say, I want to debate with you, I used to do that earlier. Now, anyone, whether good, bad, ugly, whether he's intelligent or not, if he can gather 10,000 people, that means he has a following. He's not doing it for fame. And then we will have a public dialogue. For you, you can have a dialogue with my student. When you're coming to Bombay, tell me. I have got hundreds of students. Fair many. Enough. Fair enough. You know, we have students in our school. We have many people. And they love it. So the list goes, you want to debate? Come to Bombay, give me the time. One, two, three, four, we have many. Fair enough. Hey? May that, I have, may wait, I have wait, the wait, answers wait, wait, to wait, my wait. questions? I'm coming, I'm coming. Thank but you. because you made a challenge before, the challenge is more important than the answer. The answers I've already given many times. I'll come to it. So there, this is your assumption. This is what I say. I'm not here to criticize it unless someone forces me to. That I said because Rahul was arguing so much. That's why I said. Otherwise, in my talk, I'm not here to criticize any religion. Thank you. I'm that's, what I to hear. that's what I wanted to hear from you. Because see, but, religion but it, is beyond criticism. It's beyond... But you have to call a spade a spade. If you say, why is the teacher saying 2 plus 2 is 3 is wrong? The teacher criticizes. He's not criticizing. If someone is forcing, no, I'm right. 2 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 3. You see, just because somebody else's perspective does not agree with yours, because he's following a different religion or sect. No religion. 2 does, plus does 2 does not mean that that person is wrong. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 is a universal fact. Now, someone comes from the village and tells me 2 plus 2 is 3. I'll tell him with love. But yes, if he insists, I said, no, brother, it's enough. So because I'm in this field, alhamdulillah, I'm not here to criticize, but someone forces me to criticize. Okay, give me one example of unscientific thing. I can give you. I don't hurt the other Hindus. I want to win them over. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 34, that you get them closer with love. Win your enemy, don't defeat them. So all these people, I'm winning them over. I'm not defeating them. Neither do I want to defeat you. I want to win you, brother. Well, I, I guess if one way... Inshallah, win, I will win you with your two answers. One way to win somebody is through humility. And you have reached that stage where, you know, as a person grows larger than life, yes. he becomes more humble. Correct. For you I, to say that I would not challenge you, I mean, you no, know... No, but once you reach a stage, if that is causing loss, Allah also says, I'll put you in hell. He is much higher than me. Infinite time. But... That does not mean it should go against the message. Humility doesn't mean that me being humble to you, I am giving a wrong signal to millions of people. Then it will be injustice. I can't be humble. Okay, 2 plus 2 is 3. Very good, son. Other thousand people will start calculating 2 plus 2 is 3. Because Zakir has said. That's not humility. That is injustice, dishonesty. Right? Now coming to your questions. Thank you. The first question the brother asked is, which he said it comes in the first 13. It was the 11th most common question or misconception in the mind of the non-Muslim that if Islam is against idol worship, why do you bow down to the Kaaba when you offer Salah? No Muslim ever worships the Kaaba when you offer Salah. Kaaba is the Qibla. It is the direction. We Muslims, we believe in unity. Now when we offer Salah, suppose you want to offer Salah here. Some will say less faith, not some will say south, some will say east, some will say west. For unity, Allah says in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, that wherever you are, face towards the Kaaba. So Kaaba is the Qibla, it is the direction. So we are facing in that direction, but no one worships the Kaaba. Previously, the Muslims were the first people to do the world map. And Al-Idrusi, 1154, he drew the world map. North Pole down, South Pole was on top and Kaaba was in the center. The Western cartographers came and they turned the map upside down. North Pole top, South Pole down. Yet the Kaaba is in the center. So if you are in the north, you pace towards the south. 
If you are in the south, you face towards the north. If you are in the east, you face towards the west. If you are in the west, you face towards the east. Kaaba is at the center. So we pray that as a qibla, as a direction. No one worships it. Further, when we go for Umrah, or for pilgrimage, or for Hajj, we circumambulate around the Kaaba. You may ask that why do you circumambulate around the Kaaba? Why do you circle around the Kaaba? I do it because of the command from Almighty God and the Prophet. But the logical reason I can think is because every circle has only one center. So when we circumambulate around the Kaaba, logically I think we are testifying this one God. Furthermore, if yet you have doubts, if you read the Hadith that's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Hajj, chapter 56, Hadith number 675, Hadith may Allah be pleased with him, near the second Caliph of Islam, second Khalifa. He said that this black stone pointing at the Hajri Aswat, black stone, it can neither benefit me, it can neither harm me. Just because my Prophet kissed it, I'm kissing it. This statement that this black stone can neither harm anyone, nor benefit anyone, is sufficient to prove that the Muslims don't worship the Kaaba. Furthermore, at the time of the Prophet, there were Sahabas, there were companions of the Prophet who stood on the Kaaba and gave the Azan. No idol worshipper will ever stand on the idol and give the Azan. Proving that no Muslim ever worshipped the Kaaba, it's only the Qibla, it's a direction. Coming to a second question. Hope you're convinced with the first question. Sure I am, thank you. Very good. 50% I won you over. Now next 50%. Your second question was, decades earlier, centuries earlier, there was no clock, no way to keep time. So we could justify that giving Azan was right. Now everything is there, clock is there, time is there. So why do we have to give the Azan? Very good question. The reason we give the Azan is for many things. One thing is to tell everyone it is time. You tell me one thing. Everyone has the watch during examination. Yet the teacher rings the bell, time is up. So you tell the school teacher, why are you ringing the bell that the period is up? Everyone has the watch. To tell everyone, finish, time is up, next period. So today when we have the azan, you can have a big clock also, a big bell. But a prophet said, bell is not good. Therefore, in Christian, you have bell. Some religion, you have the drum. The prophet said, no, this is not good. No drum, no bell. Someone suggested human voice. He liked it. So better than the drum, we have called human voice. And our azan has a message. The bell, sometimes the bell in the school has a message, period is up. Sometimes the bell has a message, period is starting. Sometimes the bell has a message, different message. That fire alarm, run away. You understand, no? Bell cannot speak. You read the bell, okay, fire is there, run away. In the Azan, it has a message. It says, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah is the greatest. God is the greatest, four times. Ashhadu Allah, Allah, Allah. Ashhadu Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That I bear witness, there's no God but Allah. He's calling out. I bear witness, there's no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Hail al-Salah, Hail al-Salah. Come to Salah, come to Salah. Hail al-Falah, Hail al-Falah. Come to success, come to success. He's giving you a message. God is the greatest, God is the greatest, God is the greatest, God is the greatest. Four times, there's no God but Allah. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Giving you a message that your messenger, Prophet Muhammad, you don't have to worship him. He is only a messenger. He is the servant of God. Five times we are reminded in the Azan. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He is not Allah. Come to Salah. Come to prayers. Come to prayers. Come to success. Come to success. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. So it's a message telling you it is time for prayer. At the same time, testifying there's one God, it is a message. And the beauty of it is that whichever part of the world you go, it's only in Arabic. So if you, if you have in French, if you go to France, you don't understand French. You say, what is the person shouting? Is he abusing me? <laughs> so throughout the world, you have in Arabic. Even if I don't know Arabic, at least I know the translation of the Azan. So it is a reminder. In the morning salah, another reminder. It says, as salatu khairam in a norm. Prayer is better than sleep. As salatu khairam in a norm. Prayer, now when you hear, ah, prayer is better than sleep, so you get up. With the ghanta, I put the snooze on. You know snooze? Another 10 minutes. Another snooze, 10 minutes. Here, as salatu khairam in a norm. Only for the morning's azan. Prayer is better than sleep. So here it's a message. 
even though you have watched, you don't keep on watching. So now, because we pray in congregation, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, there are no less than three hadith in Sahih Bukhari, which says that you get 25 times, 27 times more sawab when you pray in congregation. So the azan is reminding you that the congregation is going to start. So you know once the azan is given, within 20 minutes, the congregation will start. So you get ready, you do your wudu, you do your ablution, and you go to the mosque. If it is not there, and many people don't know what is the time, it keeps on changing. I will not know what is the time for sunset today. Do you know, brother? Do you know the time for morning sunrise in Dubai? It changes every day. So what is it now you know? Not rough, rough. Most of the people here will have rough idea. So, though you are a scientific person, you have a watch. If the Adhan is there, ah, now it is time, I'll go for prayers. So even in the age of science and technology, it's a reminder. And besides the reminder, it's giving you a message. It's calling you towards the truth, it's calling you towards success. So that's the reason even 100 years, 1000 years back it was correct. Even today it is correct and even tomorrow it will be correct. Hope this convinces you. Thank you kindly. So at least in this question I won you over. Yes, you have. Thank Inshallah. You and I pray to God to guide you and to guide me also. Thank you. So how does it boil down to like smoking?